Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Corey D and the coolest man in the galaxy, Billy D. Williams! Don't lose it. Keep it going. Keep it going. Make them feel the love. Yeah. Yeah. More. You're not clapping hard enough. Put your soda down. There we go. You may take the little seat, sir. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you. Well, it's nice to see everybody. Where, where, where are we anyway? What is this place? <laughs> we are in Austin, Texas. No, I know we're in Austin, Texas, but this is a stadium? What? Oh, yeah, in the stadium. Oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> How's everybody today? <laughs> this is my son, Corey. <laughs> this is my other son, Derek. Entertainer. I was running out of things to say. It's the longest bathroom break in history, so. Excellent. So, before we get to the studio questions, I always like to kick things off. As we went over earlier, some of Mr. Williams' movies, which we all know. The reason I start things this way is because here's something a lot of people don't know, and I like to engage. Aside from being an amazing actor, Mr. Williams is also an amazing painter, and he went to art school. So I always have our Q&A start off with a little bit of education behind his art. So Billy, tell us about your art. Well, you, you, I, I'm in the middle of writing my memoirs right now. I'm pretty much done with it. And it'll be released in the uh, 2023 next year. And uh, I'll be talking a lot about uh, my experiences at the... I grew up in New York City. And... Um, I went to a school called the, uh, well, the high school I went to was Music and Art High School. And then from Music and Art High School, I got a scholarship to a school called the National Academy of Design for the Fine Arts, where I spent two years on the scholarship of uh, painting when I was uh, 18, 19 years old. And I, uh, I was nominated for a Guggenheim and won a Hall Garden, which is comparable to a Guggenheim. And uh, so... You can clap, please do. <laughs> anyway, paint, painting has been very much a part of my life. So, um, I, in fact, uh, the Smithsonian owns one of my paintings. The Schoenberg... And the Schoenberg owns one of my paintings. And if you want to see any of the paintings, it's on what? Oh, it's a very simple website. I know you forget it a lot. It's billydwilliams.com. <laughs> so you'll see a, a little bit of what, what, I, what I've uh, done. I have quite a collection, actually. I got over, I think now, about 300 paintings, maybe more, wow. that and, I have stored away. And we actually have a limited edition print lithograph of one of his paintings that he did based on The Empire Strikes Back. We're, we're almost sold out. We had a thousand worldwide. We actually have them at the booth. No pressure to buy, but if you want to see what it looks like, you guys are welcome to come to the booth and check it out. And if you want to buy one, you can do that too. Corey, do you own one of your dad's paintings? Oh, uh, well, I have a few, but most of them are portraits of me. So, you know, he, he does great portraits, and so he would uh, send me a painting, and it would be a portrait of me, and by the time we got to about the third one, it said, yeah, you know, people are going to think I love myself if you send me another portrait. So I said, can you send me something else? And, and he sent me a, a signed poster, which I, which I love. It's a, it's a musician, because I'm a musician. So, but yeah, I have a few, few of the portraits. Oh, my favorite one is the one of you and I on it. 
but I was like five years old. Oh yeah, with the sunglasses. You, you, you're wearing sunglasses on. You're yeah. wearing sunglasses. Yeah, it was five from a, five years old, a hipster. It was, it was done from a photograph uh, taken by my mother, I guess, at that time. Now you know it must be so cool to be a celebrity son because you kind of got a role in Return of the Jedi because of it, I think, right? Yeah, I was in the right place at the right time. So share with the audience a little bit about your involvement with uh, Return of the Jedi. Well, uh, Dad asked me if I wanted to come to Yuma, Arizona to stand in for him. Uh, because as I was getting older, I was looking less like my mom and more like him. And um, so they figured I'd be a good stand in for him. And so I went there to Arizona to reluctantly because I knew how hot it was going to be there. And, um, and I know how movie shoots can be. Most people think it's like, ooh, well, it's really exciting. It's so boring. Because you wait and you wait and you hurry up and wait and you wait some more. So it's like, I don't know, you know, I'm working on this album. I'm going to get a big record deal. I'm going to be a music star here, you know, which never happened. But, uh, you know, I was hesitant to go, but I reluctantly agreed. I went. And one thing led to another, so I worked as a... Uh, you, you can, you know, if you want to listen to his music, uh, he's online. I, I, yeah, you know. it's called Sonic Biotic and also 3D Nucleus. It's on Spotify and, and everything. A couple of music projects I have on that I'm producing right now. Good stuff, really good stuff. And you know, speaking of music, Billy, you did an album ages ago that was, has been re-released. What was the... Oh, it was called uh, uh, Let's Misbehave with Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> sounded like Frank Sinatra or something, but he was like a crooner. <laughs> it was a long time ago. It was back in 1961 when I did it. And it was an, a different era of music. That's when um, a fr phrasing, as far as singing well it was the uh, sinatra here when uh, what they call phrasing was really important uh, i don't know if that's important anymore it's a whole different uh since hip-hop everything's changed anything goes now you can make anything work It'll get you on a song still like i but i like country music okay uh, I, you know i still like i like that's kind of sentiment. I really appreciate that. So we have country music fans in the audience. Do you guys need seats? You can, any open seat, you may sit down. If you need people to move, tell them to get the hell out of the way. It's fine. All right, who's ready to start asking some questions? I love this. So I'll use my mic for this one. How's that? All right, name and questions, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> yeah, hi. My name is Emily, and my question is, what do you hope your legacy will be? I don't know, a few things. <laughs> I, uh, well, certainly my accomplishments, I, I suppose, yeah. But uh, my biggest accomplishment, uh, two big co accomplishments. Number one, my... He's gonna embarrass me now. <laughs> He, he was my first baby. Uh, then there's my daughter, my, uh, my wonderful, beautiful daughter. And of course, my grandchildren, you know, my uh, Finnegan and Lucy. Um, but I don't know, you know, it's, you know, that's a question. I, I don't really brag about myself, but you know I'm not I, I don't I'm not given to to doing that kind of stuff. I mean, even sitting here right now, the whole idea of, of, of answering questions like this is uh, um, it, sometimes is at times it feels like an under an undertaking, you know. But anyway. Uh, there, there are quite a few things I've done in my life. I'm 85 years old now. So I, I've been around a long, long, long time. So I've done quite a few things in my life. And you know, he started acting, he was six years old on stage. 
Tell them the story, Pops. Hey, wait. Yeah, I, what was, uh, to I did a Broadway musical uh, when I was six and a half years old. It was right after the war. Uh, the second war, uh, it was 1945. Um, I uh, was in a musical called The Firebrand of Florence. It was, um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Kurt Weill. Uh, he wrote, with Bertolt Brecht, he wrote Three Penny Opera. I, I, you know, many of you are too young to really know what that's all about. But anyway, I was on stage with his wife, Lotte Lenya. And I had a, uh, I was, uh, I had two songs, two little chants that I did. Uh, I played a little page boy. And I had uh, one, one to chant. I introduced the uh, Duchess by singing uh, a song or a chant. Uh, make way for the Duchess, for her grace the Duchess. Make way for the Duchess, for her legal, regal Duchess. And then the, the second one was, I brought a message from the Duchess. Message from the Duchess, from her grace the Duchess. Message from the Duchess, from her legal, regal Duchess. And uh, whenever there were kids in the audience, I would make faces at the kids in, in the audience when I was that age. I was six, seven years old. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so sorry that we're exhausting that you had to switch with the other guy. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, Batman, let's go over here to the gentleman in the hat. Name and question, sir. Uh, my name's JP. What was your motivation for Lando? Like, did you model him after somebody you knew, or what did you use as motivation? Well, you know, I, I'm the kind of a person that uh, uh, when people get into discussions about the difference between black and white, it's something that I kind of stay away from, and only because I, I always see myself as a full spectrum of colors. And as a painter, I have a very clear understanding of that. Um, but when I took on Lando, I really wanted to uh, make him bigger than life. I wanted to get past all of the discussions and the usual discussions about uh, racial differences and stuff like that. Um, he, when I first of all, when I heard his name, Calrissian, I said, "Whoa, that's interesting." Uh, let me see what I can do with that. And I found out Calrissian is an Armenian name. So I thought, okay, I'll use that whole idea. And of course, uh, when I got the cape, that kind of uh, put it way over the top. <laughs> so I decided to really go for a kind of a bigger than life uh, kind of an individual who was uh, uh, um, who was past that point of discussing racial differences. So that's how I developed my, uh, my, uh, my Lando. Excellent. Knowing him, knowing him, there's a lot he's, of in there. He's, he's a Lando of the universe. You know, he gets asked a lot too, did you ever keep anything from the movie? And he says, oh, I always wish I kept the cape. I was so excited when he went back to film the new Star Wars, and the minute he was done filming, I'm like, well, did you keep this cape? He's like, no, I forgot to ask. <laughs> yes, buddy, name and question. My name is um, Jack Herger. My question is, how did the Sarlacc pit pull in Lando Calrissian, but not slave one at full throttle? <laughs> I like that. All right, who's going to answer that? Which one of you is answering that? You know, there's always one question that you go, wait, uh, do I know the answer to that one? Like, you don't want to look like a complete idiot. You know, I was in the movie. I was, I was in the Starlight Pit scene. Uh, I, I really, I don't have an answer for that one, do you? <laughs> Chip wasn't really as edible. Well, Harrison is—he's good, <laughs> but I don't know if he's that good. 
<laughs> what do you think the answer is, Jack? I think, I think we should contact Lucasfilm and get this kid a job. Yeah, really? I like it. She's like, yeah. Is this your brother? Oh. Oh, okay. Good. We'll be you with you. Future that was a writer, great one. Producer, you're on my list of maybe. I said you're not getting it. Okay, Batman, go up uh, to the gentleman standing up there with his hand in the air. Name and question. Hi, my name's Tim. Uh, Billy, so you've been an actor almost your whole life, and I'm sure... Uh, you've got a ton of fan mail over that long career. What is the importance of interacting with your fans? And has there been a particular letter well, that's I'm quite grateful to uh, all of the people that have given me support throughout the years. You know, I'm one of the, I'm of that school, of, of that kind of thinking that says, you know, you be good to the people that have uh, given you this opportunity. And that's how I pretty much live my life. So thank you for uh, watching me over the years. Look at it this way, guys. You're here for him, but guess what? He's here for you. Look at it that way. Absolutely. I will let you ask a question, but you're not going on the list. My name is Noah, and my question All right, so the first question he actually can't answer because he actually doesn't know the answer, unfortunately. But the second question, uh, say it one more time. What was the most fun movie scene you've ever filmed? I've, I've done so many movies. Um, well, one of my favorite movies was uh, a movie about uh, baseball players called the Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings. She's wearing a costume up there. And certainly, uh, Brian's song was one of my favorite experiences. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Jimmy uh, uh, passed away the other day. So, sorry to hear about that. Um, uh, but I, I, yeah, there are lots of stuff, a lot of things. Oh, but bingo was a lot of fun, yeah. So much fun. I was 16, maybe, and, and was on the movie set with you the entire time you filmed Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars. There were some characters and some great baseball stunts and stuff. And by the way, you know, when, I, when you think about it, a lot of those stunts, you know, with, with driving down the road and... The, the, right. You know, today you use CGI to, to, yeah. to, to give that effect. But these guys were actually literally taking the ball and throwing it on the road and making it. Yeah, between two moving cars. So you can picture two moving cars side by side, driving down the road at about 35 miles an hour, and they're playing catch back and forth by bouncing the ball on the road and into their gloves. So it was pretty amazing stuff that those guys did. They were amazing, those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, all right, back on this side. The gentleman in the hat right here. Uh, NCC. Yeah. Hi, so glad to see you today. My name is Thanks. Rick. Since you're only 85 years young, I wonder if you still have something in the bucket list, a role you wish you'd gotten, you haven't gotten yet, or one you'd like to rephrase. Well, I always wanted to play Duke Ellington. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was the only one that could actually do it. And I met him the first time, I met him a couple of times. Uh, throughout the years before he passed away. Uh, but uh, the first time I met him, I was about 18 years old. And uh, there was a reception for him at a uh, newspaper in uh, New York City called The New York Age. And a friend of mine was the managing editor of it. And he had this reception. And the whole room was surrounded with all of these ladies waiting for him. And he was very charming. In fact, he was so he was used to compete with his father to see who was more charming. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I remember I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when he walked into the room, 
He made each woman feel like she was the only woman in the room. I took out my pen and big piece of paper and, and I took notes. <laughs> but um, Ellington, and I met him the second time in Vegas. And, uh, and I went backstage with Barry Gordy. I was on the, on the contract of Barry Gordy who uh, started Motown Records. Um, and I remember I had so many questions I wanted to ask him, you know. Uh, and I remember sitting there with him, and he was the kind of a person who kind of just went along with things. He didn't really, he wasn't disturbed over the fact that everybody left the room and I was the only one who stayed back because I really wanted to talk to him. And, um, but he was a very, um, I don't know how to explain it. He was a very interesting man. But anyway, he, he was, uh, he was, uh, I always wanted to play out do Ellington. I think I, I, I still think I'm the only one who could really pull it off. Greatest painting and your worst painting, in your opinion. That's not the, you can't, that's, I don't know, how do you answer that, I don't know. Pick your favorite kid, Corey or Corey. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the paintings I did of him, I really love. Uh, the paintings I did of my, I've done, uh, I did of my daughter, I really love. Uh, but, as I said, I got over 300 paintings, so there, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, stuff there. My favorite one that, that you gave me is uh, it was a painting you did of me when I was like 13 or something. It's a little, the little four by four. And it's on the side of my fireplace. But that's one of my favorite. Ones. Well, you know, I always treat my paint. For me, the, the paintings represent. Um, um, my life, really. It's uh, it, it, it's like it, for me, they are uh, self portraits. No matter what I'm painting, I treat them as though I'm doing a portrait of my life. Yes, right here. You can clap. Always clap. It's fun. Right, the pressure's on. My name is Hudson Long, and my question is. What career would you have chosen if you didn't become an actor? Good question. Hudson? What career would you have chosen if you were not an actor? That's a good question. Um, I would certainly have been a, a painter, that, you know. Um, I don't know. When, you, when, you're, when you're growing up, you don't really... And, I still feel like I'm still growing up, uh, even though I'm as old as, as I am. Who is that? Why? What did I say? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She over there, is it? It sounds like she over She's a little pissed right now. <laughs> Keep it down over there. I think Billy should work at Target. I'd love to go up to the register and be like, yeah, thank you. And then you'd be pushing buttons and get very confused. <laughs> uh, it was you that I said, right? What do you think? What are you going to do when you, what, what do you want to do with your life? I become a veterinarian. A veterinarian? Wow, fantastic. You like animals? Dog man or cat man? Dog man or cat man? Dog? You scared off your girlfriend. What happened? You should have told her the vet story earlier. Really. Yes, sir. Is that your best buddy right here? You guys look... You look so much alike. Hint for the future. If someone says, is your dad your buddy? Say yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Corey, is that your he's buddy? You, one of your yeah, he's my, he's yeah. my best buddy in the whole world. Actually. He's my first best friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. You got into a lot of trouble here. <laughs> had great, great moments to, to, to uh, get it. All right, sorry, go ahead. Hi, Billy, my name is John. So as the first Harvey Dent of the Batman world, do you wish that Tim Burton would have given you a shot at Two-Face? Well, I was hoping to do Two-Face, actually. I, I, I mean, that's I the reason why I did a Harvey Dent. I think you've done a great job of that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of the actors who did eventually do do the character. They're all very fine actors, there's no question about it. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones is one of my favorite. Uh, but I certainly, yeah, I wanted to do uh, Two-Face, but anyway, you win some, you lose some. What happens if I stand here, are you in trouble? Uh, like, this is so hard, because everyone's like here, so how about like right here, about here, the guy with the long hair, gentlemen, thank you. Hi, my name is Nick. And I was wondering, how did you land the role of the director of the Global Defense Initiative in Command and Conquer 3? I don't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> they probably just called me and we went, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they usually call me up and say, do this. I say, okay, how much are you going to... What are you going to pay me? You came right after James Earl Jones. He was the director in the previous game of GDI. Oh, really? Yeah. Same I character? You know a lot more about it than I do. <laughs> it, was the, it was the first thing I saw you in, honestly. Oh, what? It was the very first thing I saw you in. Oh, and really? And then I saw Star Wars. So. Oh. oh, okay. You did it the right way. Did you see Mahogany yet? <laughs> the exit's right there. Oh. Uh, yes, um, Imperial guy. Hi, I'm Mom. Hello, man. This question's for Corey. What was it like seeing your dad as Lando Carissa for so much? And did you think he was a good guy or a bad guy? Boy, that's a great area there. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> That is a good one. I was excited, really. I mean, I, I was a Star Wars fan from the first movie. And so when he came, when he told me that he was going to be in the next Star Wars movie, I kind of thought, nah, get out of here. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's, he's, he was known for like romantic roles like he did in Lady Sins and Bruce Mahogany and his movies. And I was like, oh, and how are they, they going to make this work? But it was fantastic, and, you know. I loved it the moment I saw it. But I could see it's difficult, you know, as a son to watch your father in a movie and like really take it seriously because you see so many qualities of him in the character. Like so you say he doesn't take me seriously. Right. <laughs> Great. Thanks. You try to, you, Thanks, Glory. <laughs> you try to separate what you know about the person and just look at the character and it, it was very it was very easy to do it, but even when I look at Lando Calrissian, I see so much of him in the role. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was super exciting. But he has some stories he could tell you about uh, going to pick my little sister up from school and and everybody thinking that Lando yeah. Calrissian was a traitor. Yeah, I was just thinking. <laughs> I was just thinking about uh, him not him not taking me seriously. I I remember one moment, one moment, and uh, I was in admonishing him, I was chastising him about something. And he stood there and listened to me. And he just looked at me and went, uh... <laughs> I, it took me a moment. You know, I, did I see what I just saw? It was subtle. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> So funny when you did. <laughs> like, right there. I always thought Lando Calrissian was a good guy. I mean, he didn't have any choice. 
really, I mean, he's put in a position. What are you going to tell Mark Vader? No. So, you know, what are you going to do? He shows up, you do what he tells you to do, or you'll probably be the next one laying on the floor. Well, listen, you know, I, uh, I had, uh, when I used to pick my daughter up from school, um, after I did the uh, character Lando, and everybody was accusing me of betraying uh, Han Solo. And I would pick her up from school in the, in the middle of the, uh, the school yard. All of these little kids would run up to me and say, you betrayed Han Solo. <laughs> you betrayed Han Solo. And I'm like out there trying to explain to some little kid the whole situation. <laughs> I went on airplanes and I had stewardess accusing me of betraying Han Solo. So, I've had little boys threaten my life. <laughs> but I, and eventually I got to a point where I had to really try to explain that whole situation, you know, going up against um, Darth Vader and Boba Fett. He redeemed himself. He did blow up the Death Star. I mean, come on. And by the way, <laughs> not only that, I said, did anybody die? <laughs> Nobody died. Yeah, you know, he's the only character in Star Wars that actually stood up to Darth Vader and lived. So, what's the uh, line? What, what, there wasn't. What was the line? He always makes me do that. He's like, Lord Vader, Lord Vader. That wasn't a condition of our agreement. No, it's giving Han to that bounty hunter. Feel you're being treated unfairly. <laughs> it would be unfortunate if I had to leave a garrison. Yeah, give it up, give it up. Okay, we've only got time for a couple more. I'm going to be doing you, and there was someone I promised you and you. So just hold on, okay? So you're next. This question is for both of you. I'm Andrea. And being a retired teacher, it always interests me if there was someone in your life that uh, inspired you to do what you do or just like mentored you or got you through a hard time, even a favorite teacher. Well, and, you know, for me, uh, I always think of my mother and father and my sister and my grandmother. I'm the sum total of, of that experience. So, uh, and it's a pretty vast experience. And it's an experience, if I had to uh, uh, be reincarnated, I'd want the same people back in my life. They were, they were really wonderful people. Well, I, I think, well, of course, he was a huge influence, positive influence in my life, but he also introduced me to other people who would sort of extend that influence to me further another part of the influence. Also, like my martial arts instructor was like a big brother to me, um, and he really influenced me. I, I was I've been a fit, I was a fitness trainer for 30 years, and so he used to take me to the gym when you know when I was young. And we would work out together, and so like, he sort of instilled that uh, uh, love for health and fitness, you know, in me in my life. And so, and like I said, he, as well as like introducing me to other people who yeah, I turned on to a, a, a wonderful mentor. Um, you, uh, uh, he studied uh, martial arts for a long time, and uh, he was very good at it. Uh, and you was. Uh, he was a master. You man, we called him man. So if you, but I was always introducing him to interesting people that I thought would be a, a good influence in his life. You know that well, you man, but he was. You could see him if you look up old episodes of like uh, Sanford and Son. There was one episode. It's called Lamont, Lamont Learns Karate, and so. Lamont was going to learn karate from him, actually. So he was in that episode. You see him do martial arts, he was so fast. Like he, he was like a blur. When, this was during the era when Bruce Lee was really popular and like everybody wanted to be in 
involved in martial arts in some way at that point. All right, we got two more questions and we'll be done. We're going to do, uh, you're the first one. Hello, my name is Gage. And in your opinion, how would you think Lando would react if he walked on, walked in, Han Solo wearing the Prince Leia's uh, dress? How would Lando react if he walked into the bedroom and Han Solo was wearing Princess Leia's dress? How would I react? How would Lando react? I'd say to him, my God, you look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we used to get asked, how come he's wearing Han's clothes at the end of Empire Strikes Back? Did everybody notice that? So the, we, we used to joke on stage that <laughs> Lando and Han were together, and when the lights got turned on, they put on the wrong clothes and ran in opposite directions. So, uh, who did I, it was you, right? Yeah, okay, last question, you get a good one. This is pressure. My name is Jude, and I was wondering, what do you think of Star Wars before you were in Star Wars? Well, I, I, I was, prior to Star Wars, I did, uh, I, um, I did two movies with Diana Ross, you know, uh, Lady Sins of Blues and, and uh, Mahogany, and prior to that, uh, Brian's Song with James Tom. Uh, prior to that, I did a lot of stage work in New York City on Broadway, off Broadway. I did a lot of television. Uh, I've been doing this for 60 years, so I've done a lot of, a lot of things. But, but Billy? He, he wanted to know what you thought about Star Wars, not what you did. Oh. <laughs> he sorry. wanted to know what you thought about the first movie before you were in the second one. Oh, oh, I, I, I really looked forward to uh, participating. Uh, it, it was an opportunity to... to uh, well, at that time, you had uh, quite a few young directors who were coming along, like uh, Spielberg and Coppola and... Scorsese and George Lucas, and uh, when they asked me, when George, when I was asked to participate, I really looked forward to uh, uh, working with George uh, Lucas. He's a, you know, because of his brilliance, and it was, it was a real opportunity for me, and it was a very, a, a direction that I'm always willing to take, especially when I'm, I have an opportunity to take a character and mold it into something much more than was necessarily intended. I don't know if that answers your question or not. <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right, guys, just a little reminder here. Uh, Mr. Williams doesn't take photos at his booth at all, like there's no photography in the area. So if you want a photo with him and or the both of them, we're going there next, the photo ops. So if you haven't gotten the ticket for the photo ops, I would go up there right now and get in line, okay? Well, but anyway, it's been nice seeing everybody. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Everybody stay well. Be safe. Oh, and I, I have a book called Random Thoughts of an Eternal Optimist, and it's on Amazon right now, and it's, yeah, it's a compilation of, like, all of, like, optimistic thoughts and positive uh, statements about things. I call him Pythagoras, the Greek philosopher. All right, I've just been told that I lied to you. The photo ops are not now. They're at three. So that gives you plenty of time not to have to rush and get up there. So three. Okay, so the winners, who's going to be Billy D. Approved, Jack, who asked about the Sarlacc pit, are you here, buddy? Okay, I loved your question. Here you go, buddy. All right, and then the next one is going to be, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then the next one we're going to do is Hudson. Uh, what career would you have if you weren't an actor? Where's Hudson? Where's Hudson? Oh, oh, the guy in the front row that we get the magic for. All right, and then the last one was Lon. I loved your good guy, bad guy question. So there you go. Everybody's questions were amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everybody. Give it up for Corey D and Billy D. Williams.